Hello, a very warm welcome to Middle East Matters. I'm Sanam Shantier. Coming up on this week's show, rebuilding Syria pounded to rubble after seven years of conflict. Reconstruction is underway in three cities. Our correspondents take a look at the impact of U.S. sanctions on Iran inside the country. Growth in tourism is put at risk. This since Donald Trump walked away from the nuclear deal. Also coming up, Lebanese director Salim Saab joins us in the studio to talk about his latest documentary, Fort Strong, which sheds light on women artists leaving their mark on the Arab world. Well, there's uh, stories coming up in this program, but first to Syria, where as the war winds down, reconstruction efforts are getting underway. This, as the Syrian regime is calling on refugees to return home, and by some estimates, it will take up to 345 billion euros to rebuild the war-torn country. Clément Bonero has the story. It was one of the locals' favourite hobbies, especially among children, to escape the heat during summertime. But for years, war made swimming impossible. This pool in central Aleppo reopened last year. Its manager had to pay for all renovation work out of his own pocket. This pool had a capacity of 300 people. It was closed for six years because of the war. We left when rebels captured the city, and when we came back, everything was in ruins. Whether it's to cool off, have fun or keep fit, dozens come here every day, a sign that things are slowly getting better in Aleppo. I'm here to keep myself cool and relax. It gets very hot during the day. Outside the swimming pool, it's a different story. The scars of war are everywhere. Reconstruction has only just started. Bulldozers and road rollers are busy repairing the city's streets, manoeuvring between craters and piles of rubble. Some 50 kilometres to the east is Deir Hafa, a town once held by the Islamic State group. Here, too, houses and buildings bear the marks of years of conflict. But projects funded by the UN Refugee Agency have given the town a facelift. Solar-powered lamps now lighten up the streets. And a new community centre offers classes for children to help them with their homework. Some of these children haven't been to school and barely know how to read and write. They can't do their homework, so we're here to help them catch up. Education is not the only priority. The UNHCR is also helping residents get back to work. Faisal Abdullah was given a machine and seeds worth 2,000 euros so he could start growing crops again. There are lots of people looking for jobs here, and without help, I would be just sitting around and doing nothing. Elsewhere in the country, it's the most basic infrastructure that's still lacking. This hospital in Raqqa was used as a final holdout by jihadists. One year on, restoration work is yet to begin. The hospital needs massive funding to be restored. More than three billion Syrian pounds. This excludes medical equipment, which would be extremely expensive. According to the UN, rebuilding Syria could cost more than 250 billion euros. As the war draws to a close, a new battle begins over who should foot the bill. Since Donald Trump torpedoed the nuclear deal, Iran has been sinking back into economic gloom. Now, a second phase is planned to come back into effect on November the 4th, targeting the country's oil industry and its ordinary citizens that are feeling the pinch. These punitive measures have an impact on everything, from food prices to the import of medicines. And our correspondents went to find out how these measures affect the tourism sector. A historic city known for its blue mosques. Isfahan is a tourist favorite. These French visitors refused to cancel their trip, despite looming U.S. sanctions on the country. And though they've been enjoying the sights, they've had to make a few adjustments during their trip. 
Our tour guide gave us money, but we've been paying in euros. It's better for us because the currency fluctuates so much. The tour operator was expecting these things because we came via Turkey. And in the end, we're so happy to be here. Our children told us we were crazy to come here, but we weren't that scared. We don't regret coming. There's been a 30 to 40 percent decrease in European tourists coming to Iran this year, this according to tour operators. A war of words between the United States and Iran and rising inflation could be turning visitors away. In this market, vendors are feeling the pinch. Our products are made of silver. Before, we bought some for 6,000 tomans. Now it's six times more expensive. They must get rid of these sanctions and the nuclear deal must be respected. We never wanted a war. This 17th century hotel is doing better. An Isfahanian institution, the Abbasi Hotel has nine restaurants and some 200 rooms. But despite its stellar reputation, the hotel too has felt the pressure of U.S. sanctions. Our industry is the first to be hit by politics. When Trump pulled out of the international nuclear deal, we had entire groups of Europeans cancelling their reservations. In the beginning, we had cancellations, and then tourists realized that everything is fine, and people have started to book again. Staying optimistic, the hotel manager insists on showing us this suite before we leave. It's former French president Charles de Gaulle's room from around 60 years ago. We're waiting for Emmanuel Macron to come here now. In order to encourage tourists to visit, Iranian authorities have put in place a new visa system. Instead of sticking a document in visitors' passports, they'll now use loose papers so that tourists can take them out if they have to visit the United States. Now, often on this show, we highlight uh, the oppression of women in the region. We talk about patriarchy, hierarchy and sexism. But it's equally important for us to draw attention to those who are fighting to assert their influence. So this week, we're joined by one man who's done exactly that, Franco-Lebanese director Salim Saab has documented a collage of women from Lebanon, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait who are thriving in the world of street art, dance and uh, combat sports, to name but a few. Let's now watch a clip of Fort that's uh, strong in English. Salim Saab, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us, how did this project come to life? Okay, so before this movie, Strong, I made a movie called Beirut Street about hip hop in Lebanon. And uh, in this movie, th there is like almost 30 artists, including five, five women artists, uh, rappers and break dancers. And when I screened this movie uh, in France, after the screening, during the Q&R, people were kind of uh, surprised to see Lebanese women into hip hop. And I was surprised of this reaction. So it reminded me that there is a lot of stereotypes about Arab women in the West. Like in the West, they think that Arab women are weak, are not independent. And when Western media uh, do documentaries or, uh, or report about uh, Arab women, they always show, um, how we say, uh, gender inequality. OK. It doesn't mean that there is not gender inequality. There is in all over the world. But it doesn't mean that Arab women are weak. No, they are very strong. So I wanted to show those, these artists from Lebanon, uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Tunisia, to show that through art, these girls find um, a way to express themselves, to be free, to be independent. And I wanted to break the stereotypes. And of course, for these women, it's not just about breaking the stereotypes. They also, some of them certainly have a message to tell through their artwork. What are those? Sure. Like um, one of the artists, Marie Jo Ayoub, she's a graffiti artist, Lebanese graffiti artist. She uh, drew a woman, a naked woman, uh, holding, uh, protecting a house. 
and uh, through this uh, graffiti, she wanted to break the taboo of uh, nudity, of uh, the woman's body in the Arab world, because in some society in the Arab world, there is taboo uh, when it comes to nudity. And also she wanted to, uh, she show a woman like protecting her house to show that we have to protect our heritage. So you're talking about these women who are certainly pushing the boundaries. What challenges uh, did they tell you they face? Because we are still talking about largely conservative, patriarchal societies. Well, we talked about that in the movie, and uh, all the girls uh, uh, are supported by their parents, by their friends, by their entourage, uh, even by the society. It's, so it's accepted by the society, so it's kind of cool to show that, to show a positive side of the Arab world, because in general, when Western media focus on the Arab world, it's only about the bad side. And I wanted to show the, the positive side, because uh, we are a great uh, civilization, and we, are a great, uh, uh, we have a great history. And so you've screened this film both here in France and uh, in the Middle in East. Lebanon. Tell us about the different reactions that you've had. Okay. Uh, in Lebanon, everybody was uh, happy. I screened it in Beirut, of course, the capital, but also in South Lebanon. And uh, everybody, like, supported... Which is slightly more conservative. Yeah, but uh, I, had, I also had some stereotypes and I was like... I didn't know what to expect, you know, but everybody was was happy. And in France also, they was happy to they were happy to to see another side of the Arab world. So it's my goal to show the, a positive side of uh, of so our shown, countries. You've shown the positive side. Very briefly, what's uh, next for Salim Saab? Uh, I'm working on a movie about uh, Lebanese identity, because there is a lot of question around uh, the Lebanese identity. So. This is my next uh, step. Salim Saab, director and journalist, thank you so much for thank joining so us much. here on Middle East Matters. Now, uh, that's it for us this week. We love hearing from you, so do reach out to us on both Facebook and Twitter. That's Middle East Matters, France at 24. Thank you for watching.